Okay, so Foundations of Math 10, this is chapter 4, uh, rational numbers, roots and powers, uh, all sorts of things like that. So let's just go over real quickly what we uh, did in 4.1 and 4.2, okay? Uh, we talked about rational numbers and irrational numbers, okay? So if, you, if you're given a list of numbers, how could you determine whether they're rational or irrational? <clears throat> well, repeating or terminating decimals are rational. So if it's in decimal form and the decimal stops, like this one right here, 3.75, boom, that's a terminating decimal. So that's rational. If it repeats, like this one over here, 0 0.01 repeating, see that repeating sign? That is rational, okay? Because that can be written as a fraction, okay? And of course, if you have a fraction or a rational like this, positive or negative, that's rational. Something that's irrational would be examples like the square root of three. If you did that on your calculator, it would be a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. So that on your calculator would fill up your calculator screen with numbers, right? And uh, there would be no end. There would be no chunks of those decimals that would repeat. So if we actually do that on the calculator here, uh, let's do the square root of 3. Okay, so this is what it looks like there in the calculator screen. There's no one number that repeats over and over or block of numbers that repeats over and over. It appears to fill up the entire field there with decimals. There's no repeats. So you can say this is probably irrational. And root 3 can't be written as a fraction of any rational numbers, any integers. And then, of course, pi is another example. And stop me if you have any questions, okay? Uh, 4.3 was simplifying uh, square roots, okay? We talked about mixed radicals and entire radicals. Remember that? What kind of radical is this one right here? Mixed or entire? That's an entire radical because the number is entirely underneath the root sign. Entirely. Completely underneath the root sign. This is a mixed radical right there. Okay? That's mixed because we have a coefficient, a number coefficient in front, and we have uh, a radical, a radicand underneath the root sign. Okay? So this is important too, going from you know, a mixed or an entire radical to a mixed radical, that's also called simplifying, okay? simplifying a square root. And so if we're asked to do that, the method that we focused on most here in class was to look for a factor of 200, a factor of the radicand, that is a perfect square itself and you want the largest perfect square factor, okay? In this case, it's 100. So we know that root 100 actually equals a regular old 10. So that's how you kind of simplify. Root 2 doesn't simplify. So root 200 can be written as 10 root 2, okay? A similar procedure for cube roots or for uh, fourth roots or fifth roots, okay? What we want to do is we want to look for a factor of 200 that is a perfect cube so that we can reduce this, take it out of there. Remember we talked about this as a cube root club, okay? In the cube root club, you can get in if you get cubed and you can only come out if you're a perfect cube. Okay, that's the only way you get out of that club, if you're a perfect cube. So eight is a perfect cube, eight wants out. So what happens, cube root of eight is actually two and cube root of 25, that's not a perfect cube, right? 27 is, but 25 isn't. And 25 doesn't have any factors that are perfect cubes. So this is to cube root 25 as a final answer there. All right? Okay? Questions about that? So if I give you this, 3 root 10, and I ask you to rewrite this as an entire radical, what would you have to do here? Someone tell me quick. What would I have to do to write this as an entire radical? <coughs> yeah, the 3 has to get squared to get into the square root club. Okay, so if it wants to come into this really pumping club here, it's got to get squared. Okay, get squared or go home. That's what the 10 says. And so this is actually root 9 times 10 or root 90. Okay, yeah, get squared or go home. Okay, got to remember that. Write, th write that one down. It's pretty good. Any questions about that? All right. What about what about the next two sections here? Okay, so 
4.4 and 4.5, we talked about evaluating powers, okay? So to evaluate powers without using a calculator, so there's going to be parts of the exam where you're not allowed to use a calculator, okay? So there may be a section where you have to turn your calculators in or where you can't bring your calculators out uh, for that one yet. So just be aware of that. There are some questions where, you know, you should know some basic stuff. This one is maybe one of the more challenging type questions that you can't use a calculator for. But we can break it down uh, certain ways, and, we, and this is not that hard, right? So what we want to do is we want to, usually we deal with the negative exponent first, okay? So deal with the negative exponent, write it with a positive exponent. So in this case here, the negative exponent causes the 64 to come down to the denominator, and then the 2 thirds becomes positive, okay? That's the first thing that we usually do when dealing, evaluating this. From there, what we do is we realize that this cubed, uh, or sorry, this um, 3 in the denominator represents a cube root. See that? And so that is actually the cube root of 64, and then this number up top is the regular old exponent. So the cube root of 64 squared. We evaluate this, the cube root of 64. So you should have memorized 2 cubed, 3 cubed, 4 cubed, 5 cubed, 6 cubed, su stuff like that, okay? Those first five or six, you should have those memorized. 64, the cube root of 64 is 4. And so when we square 4, we get 16. Here is our final simplified answer, 1 over 16. Okay? So fractional exponents, turn those into radicals. And use mental math to evaluate, um, to evaluate those. Okay, so that was 4.4, 4.5. That's what that all was all about. Um, the negative exponents, what happens to that? The uh, denominator of a fractional exponent, what is that? And so on. Okay, so 4.6, let's take a look at 4.6. Uh, um, we have one more step here that I'll get to in a second. It was cut off. But apply exponent laws to simplify expressions. So if we're expl simplifying expressions involving powers, Remove brackets first by applying the exponent laws for the products of powers, quotients of powers, and so on. So what we want to do here is work inside the brackets first, and we see that we have something we can simplify inside the brackets. So this is going to be, this cubed applies to each factor. It's going to be x cubed, y to the mm -hmm. 6, a power raised to a power. We multiply. Oh, I should sorry, bring that down a bit. We multiply. And then once we've got that, okay, again, let's get rid of this negative. And how do we do that? Well, we flip around the numerator and the denominator. We flip it. If it's irrational, it can be flipped. And so this is now a positive for when this comes up to the top and when this goes down to the bottom. Okay? You don't have to write exponents of 1, but it's helpful to see what we're doing here next. This exponent applies to the top and applies to the bottom separately. Okay? But here what they've done is they've evaluated inside the brackets first. So you could do either way. You could do this simplification first. The x to the fifth divided by x cubed is x squared. y to the one divided by y to the sixth is y to the one minus six or y to the negative five. So you could apply this for to top and bottom first, and then simplify, or you could simplify first inside the brackets. Okay. So once we get here, now this 4 as an exponent applies to each factor, and so that's 4 times 2 to give us x to the 8, and 4 times negative 5 to give us y to the negative 20. What would be the final step here that we would have to do to simplify this? What looks a little bit off compared to what we've been doing here? Simplifying, yeah, that's right. Let's try and get all the fractions to be reduced and negative exponents, let's make them positive. So how do I write this with only positive exponents? Who knows that? What do I, what do I have to do? Yes, the y to the negative 20, this goes to the denominator and it makes that 20 positive. Perfect. So this is x to the 8 divided by y to the 20. Okay? So again, that's on page 245 of your text if you want to um, take a look at that again. But that's the review of chapter 4, roots and powers. Anybody have any questions?
No? Okay. I will give you your uh, review assignment here in a second, but that's, uh, that's our review. Okay, so here's your review assignment for, for this class, this particular time. Give you a chance to copy that down, and I'll show you the uh, textbook as well to go along with that. So in case you forget your textbook at home, you can still do some, uh, some review. Okay, so here's the textbook for those, those questions. Yeah, yeah, you can just start with the ones you have there. I'll go back to it in a bit. <laughs>